Yeah, so, we need to talk about the Flash. So because I don't think there's I don't think we need to talk about Aquaman because we know it's happening. Yeah. But then Aquaman, we, Shazam is happening, and Shazam's happening. We gotta talk about Flash. So you, go, the, I have a lot to say. So I'm gonna shut up and listen to you. <laughs> we're gonna we're just gonna get right into it. The Flash is so weird to me because Shazam. We had uh, Zachary Levi talking about. Um, his trust in James Gunn, right? And I think it's very particular uh, as we move forward with the conversation. I just think that's very particular because um, in the wake of Henry Cavill announcing him stepping down and The Rock saying they're not moving forward, Zachary's like, hey, we got to just trust what James Gunn is doing because he's building to something. And it's like, Shazam might be safe, which is ironic because if Black Adam just hitched its wagon to Shazam, he too would be safe. But here we are. Um Blue Beetle, we, we, we haven't seen anything from that. We can skip that. Aquaman, you're right. That we'll wait when we get closer to that movie. We can probably do a follow up to this. The Flash is the most interesting to me because that movie, in it, its entire concept, feels like it's set up to reboot the franchise. But that was all before James Gunn even took over. So we, that plan might be thrown out the window too. We have Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. We have uh, Sasha Kelly, I believe her name is, and she's playing Supergirl. Um, apparently Henry Cavill filmed a scene for that movie, but we don't even know if it's going to be used or not because he did just step down from the role. So it's like, and then there's the Ezra Miller of it all. Right. It's probably not. Cause that's just salt in the wound. Right. If you keep it in there yeah. and then there's yeah. the Ezra Miller of it all, where it's like, we don't know what's going on with, with the, the main character of Barry Allen, especially going forward. So, I don't know how you want to tackle it, Brandon, because you are the Flash expert and I'll follow your lead. But I'm sitting here like, I'm just going to assume the Flash gets rebooted regardless of what happens in this movie. <laughs> yes. I, so, so here's my thought. Yeah. I think the way James Gunn is able to keep part of it, keep part of the DCEU and use it as building blocks... Because literally, that's kind of what he's doing if certain things will stay and certain things will go away, right? right. He's using remnants of what the DCEU was as building blocks towards what he's going to build as the DCU. So the only reason it, the Flash movie would make sense to me is if it ends up being a true Flashpoint movie. Because right. we all know that's more or less what they're trying to go for, right? It's supposed to be a Flash film. Um, it's going to have the whole thing with him going back to save his mom. His mom is going to be alive. We all know that if he saves his mom, the entire continuity of history changes, which is why we get Michael Keaton Batman back. We have multiple versions of Barry. We have Sasha Kaye as Supergirl. There's no Superman. Like the athletes of... still here somehow, <laughs> right? Uh, like you have a lot of all these elements that are there. Now, if you understand Flashpoint for real, I'm right. not talking about the movie that came out animated. Which, by the way, the animated movie is great. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I love it. But the whole point about Flashpoint is for those comic book fans that know when it took place, the the end of Flashpoint birth. The new 52. So I've got a quick question about that because unless I'm misremembering, I could have sworn the the ending of Flashpoint was Barry making that sacrifice, right? And trying to create the world that he lost. And I thought the implication was that he's successful. Why does the new 52 end up happening he, if he did reset it? <laughs> because, because, because he... Because because the flashpoint occurring l still has a side effect. The fact yeah. that he did a change at all, even when he goes back to fix it, it changed the entire universe regardless. It simply doesn't cause it to destroy upon itself like, it like the flashpoint reality would have. Gotcha. So that that's sense. why the new 52 <laughs> happens. And, and But that's not the only thing that happens in the New 52. In the New 52, another big thing that happens is that the multiverse disappears and everything becomes 
one universe, similar to Crisis. In my understanding, I may be wrong. Anybody that tells me I'm wrong because you read more comics than me, please tell me in the comic books, comics below, please. Uh, but in my understanding, uh, that's the reason Wally Best disappears, for yeah. example, because there's no more multiverse. So we introduce Wallace West, which is the African-American nephew of Iris West. Um, and it's not till DC Rebirth that the multiverse is reintroduced to a degree and the effects of Flashpoint start to become addressed and Wally West returns. But the Wally West that returns is pre-Flashpoint, but he's still suffering the effects in his history of Flashpoint. Blah, 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 blah. Now, yeah, convoluted mess, but I got it. Correct. <laughs> and here's where I go with this. Using the DC Universe, the DCEU, as building blocks for DCU makes sense if you do. And that not only do they make sense with the elements that you could use to build the new DCU, but it also makes sense if you were to use the same actors in different roles. Like Jason Momoa as Lobo. Like Jason Momoa as Lobo or Henry Cavill in a different role. For example, which they've right? talked about, which is fascinating. They've correct. So that old Gal Gadot in a different role, right? Yeah, that would make sense if a true flashpoint is occurring, but a true flashpoint with a twist. Um, the twist being that the, the the world that's left behind as the new reality is a world where superheroes exist already as opposed to this world that is just having heroes introduced for the first time in man of steel bvs and justice league you see where i'm fo following me this yeah. and the the switch happens with barry's the one trapped in the speed force not wally and wally is left as the main flash and this is me, that I am a Barry Allen Flash fanatic through and through. Like, Barry Allen is my favorite Flash. Yeah, that has and to I, be a hard decision to come to. <laughs> yes, and I do want him to still be the main Flash, but I feel that everything that's happened with the main actor in the current iteration has brought that role out of baggage. Um, to the point that we do know everything was happened, despite of how good Grant Gustin has done to the character, we still feel the weight of what's happened with Ezra. Right. So I, so we kind of need a clean break. We've and we've only had one live action. We never had a live action Wally West, because technically the Wallace West of the show, the Wally West of the show is actually the Wallace West from the comics from the New Fifty Two. Actually, it's not yeah. Ginger Wally. Right. Which is, you so, know, like, I don't care about the race of Wally West. My issue comes right. from the way they write the character. Right. And it's like Wallace West and Wally West are just written vastly differently. And I Correct. would prefer if the CW show just went with Wally's, you know, character. Right. But they couldn't do it because they weren't married yet. And they hadn't introduced a brother and all that stuff, so, which makes sense. But, but, but the one thing about the Wally West thing that I find interesting, though, is that they are, there's an opportunity here to introduce a Flash that has been the Flash for a while and that this reality's Barry is comic book Barry, but he's more of a mentor role and something has happened to him at some point, like a crisis of infinite earths. Like this could be, this could be a universe where the crisis has already happened to a degree. Yeah. And the price was that Barry would not survive Flashpoint and Wally is now the current Flash because the big risk, I mean, you can, I mean, you either do that or you make, or you recast Barry and make Barry come big Barry because the big, the big not, but then again, thinking about Justice League Unlimited, the, the Flash in the Justice League Unlimited is Wally West. It's not Barry Allen. Right. Like, Wally, Barry Allen's only been the Flash in the DCU movies, not in the shows. 
Um, which I find it weird because they still give him Wally West lightning, but that's an animator's issue, not mine. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but but the main the main thing with Wally West is that you cannot tell his origin story without Wally, without Barry. There, one does not exist. Exactly. That that's why There's the no- Flash as a character to me is so bizarre, right? Like not like not being right. as into the lore as you are it's like wally west is distinctly his own flash which i love yes that's cool yes but having two characters it's almost it's worse than the peter parker miles morales issue of having two characters be spider-man because miles and peter can still have their own stories their own villains their own adventures barry and wally share a history they share a story right so yeah you can't you're right you can't do wally without barry but it's like do you want to gloss over that or do you want to just say we're going to do barry and then we're going to do the crisis thing and replace him with wally right or do we treat the flashpoint from the movie as the crisis thing yeah and and on the next flash movie or we don't have a flash movie in a long time right and the and and we talk about a barry that we haven't seen in flashback like you know what I mean? But, and, yeah. and, and it makes me also think, like, you kind of need fandom to fill the gaps, too. But you also don't want that as a screenwriter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. a character like Wally West, the only way it works if, you're not, if you don't have Barry around and you haven't established that, if, and you haven't established that connectivity between them is if you're allowing the public to fill the blanks. And yeah, that's kind of like what you don't want in a universe building in a, in a, in a universe that's so young right now. That's why, like, you also have to keep in mind, this is why I, this job is incredibly difficult, right? We, we went yeah. through talking about Nightwing and Donna Troy and all these other characters. And you have to remember that Barry is the same age as them. So if you're introducing Batman and Robin, but Dick is Robin, Wally therefore has to be 16, 17, whatever you want to make yeah. Dick Grayson be in that in that time yeah. space yeah. to follow DC canon. You can always change it, but if you do, you run the risk of, do we really want to damage Wally West and Dick Grayson's relationship? Because they are like the closest of friends, especially after the backlash of what the comics just did with John and Damien, right? Like, you'd run into that same issue of if you age one up, you lose that very important dynamic between the two. And so I'm just looking at how we've been talking for, for this conversation. We want them to introduce these supporting characters, these legacy characters, but how do you tackle that? Right. With, with the case of the flash without Barry Allen. It's really hard to do. It's really hard to do. I mean, I mean, but then, then again, you take advantage of the flashpoint, and yeah. the flashpoint justifies the the change in type of character and vision of the character and appearance of the character. But then again, is it the right move to end the Flash movie with a recast of Barry? Yeah, I, that's why like it's going to be hard. Which you can justify because of the flashpoint, but at the same time it's like... But, but also, like, how do you... How do you not use the Flashpoint movie as a means of creating that clean slate right. or somewhat populated slate that you want to then build a new DCU from? Because if this is a Clark that has seen action for a while, um, like, we know that Blue Beetle is probably going to be an origin story. We know that for a fact. There's no way you do Jaime Reyes out of nowhere without an origin story. It has to it, be. It is an origin story. We had a synopsis come out, and it's like, Jaime Reyes is in college. And then a scarab attaches to his back. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, but there's superheroes around, right? Like, right. It, it's, it's, it's something that's, it's a world that's lived in by super, super-powered individuals, which is the point of the new slate, right? Or the new DCU. So that's the only way the Flash movie makes sense. And also, and also, if you're using the Flashpoint of the Flash movie to reset everything, then one of the clear indications should be that 
Shazam and Aquaman take place prior. And that even though they're being released after, or at least Aquaman is after, right? Because I know Shazam first, then Flash and Aquaman. Yes. After the Flash, it is just Blue Beetle, which might just be in the new universe, and Aquaman. So, like, is the new post credit scene of these movies the the revelation that Flashpoint took over that universe? It might have to be. Like, that's the thing. It's like, I, I feel like if you really want to make this clean, you number one priority for James Gunn and Peter Saffron is to recast the role of Barry Allen, right? So you can film a post credit scene or get Wally West and you can have the post credit scene of this is a new universe, this is your new Flash, and then you see the ripples of time throughout Aquaman after, right? Um, Blue yeah. Beetle wouldn't need a post credit scene to establish that. You would just have Jaime show up in a sequel or in another movie. Um, and Aquaman, you could probably just end with I don't even know if you end with a new Aquaman. You probably just end with Flash because you don't you don't yeah. want to run the risk of replacing Jason Momoa in that movie and the the hatred that would come from from that decision. And you also don't want to yeah. show him as playing Lobo because that would be too confusing. Right. Um, or you put timestamps somewhere. Yeah. And then this takes <laughs> before place. Flashpoint. <laughs> yeah, or something. You know. Yeah. Which I want to, which, I a... which sounds corny and stupid, but. That's the only way that it makes sense to me in a degree, because yeah. it kind of it kind of also respects the fandom in a way. Like this era of DC is not being erased. It's just similar to the comic books. We're having a universe altering event that's right. going to lead to the next slate or DCU form, whatever. I want your opinion on this as as a fan of the Flash, right? And and the lore of that character. It was always weird to me that the very first Flash movie was just going to be used to fix up DC's mess ups. Like, I I don't know Tell how I about feel it. about Flash. Tell me about just it. yeah, I, I can see how you feel it already. But it's like the idea that the Flash movie is just being used for cleanup. It was fun in the comics. Flash comics existed for decades before Flashpoint. That was just another DC yeah. like crisis. Like oh, it was it existed. It six well, it existed years before Crisis, and the right. Flash had a big role in Crisis, um, which was the big the first big change, right? Right. Um, after Crisis is when Wally picks up the mantle. Yep, and he holds that mantle Bar until Flashpoint, just about right. Well, yeah. So he picks up the mantle up to DC after Flash Rebirth. Yep. Um, which occurred, I think, is 09, 09. And after that, you have Flashpoint. Um, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. <laughs> and it's, and it's, the thing is this. like, Not only that, is that it's... I mean, you can do the argument that is not necessarily too soon because he's always wanted to... Think about this. It's not too soon after he's done it once in Justice League already. Yeah. So it makes you think, okay, I, he just found out that he can do this. I can go back in time. So what if I try and go back in time to save my mother? Did he do because, that in the the Whedon cut? No, he did that. He did that in the Snyder cut. Right, but if that's what makes this even more confusing because the Whedon cut is what Warner Brothers consider canon. So he wouldn't even know that he could go back into it. It makes sense. It's a sequel to the Snyder no, no, Cut. But, but remember, does. the Flash didn't start filming till after, I think. I Oh, I get what you're saying now. Yes. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, canonically, yeah. it's like, why does he know he can do that? Unless he discovers right. he can do that. But then as an audience, it's like, we already know you can do that. It's, uh, it's a yeah, mess. It's, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, kind of, I kind of want that to be something that occurs with a more mature Barry Allen. Yeah. You know, where, where he's... he's a hundred percent honed in with his powers. Um, and he decides to make that decision, you know? Um, but also if you're going to do something like that, then you have to have all the elements that create the catastrophic changes in reality that flashpoint brings, which I haven't seen any evidence that we're going to have any of that. Um, uh, and, and also the idea that the villain is a, Evil Barry. It is so boring and so uninspired to me. Um, mainly because we don't know a good Barry yet. 
even. It's not like we've seen him be a hero, you know. Right. And you can say, oh, but he was a he just no. We, we I mean, to me, the 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 one of the reasons that I've loved Barry forever is that he was a hero before the lightning. He yep. literally wanted to solve cases as a CSI to to bring peace and justice to all those people that suffer tragedies like he did. He wanted to give them hope. He wanted them to bring them closure. So he wanted so he worked his ass off as a CSI to solve cases. So he was a hero. The lightning bolt just allowed him to do more. Because he never stopped being a CSI. It's like Steve Rogers' super soldier serum, right? It, it just yes. amplified the good that was already within yes. inside of him and allowed him to do yes. more. According to Dr. Erskine. Yes. Right. Yes. Or all So night, it's you like, know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, all for, one for all. But yeah, that's, that's the whole thing <laughs> about Barry Allen that I love. And we haven't seen any of that. Um, you know, we just, we're, and we're going straight to, because that's what makes the Flashpoint turn that much more dramatic right the fact that this hero that has been a hero for so long right has a moment of weakness and allows himself to be godly selfishly and that causes all of it you know right and then his one mistake right (laughs) and then you find out that his arch nemesis took advantage of this event and then it becomes even more crazy with the reverse flash. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, am I going to see it? Probably. Do I want to see it? Uh, no, because it doesn't interest me as a flash fan. Um, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it just doesn't interest me. Um, because I, I kind of always wanted that first Flash movie to be a Flash movie. Because in reality, what makes Flashpoint so dramatic is your favorite hero made a mistake. And, it, and because he has godly powers, it has godly consequences. But then again, I digress. <laughs> so I guess we'll see when the movie comes out in June. Uh, you know, you let me know how it is. I have no interest in this film whatsoever. <laughs> oh. uh, but let's say that he, let's say that James Gunn says that it's important for us to watch it. Do we watch it? I mean, I'm going to because I have faith in James Gunn. I'll watch but it at on the HBO same time. Max. It's <laughs> yes, HBO Max. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's it's why like the Flash is the most, in my opinion, like. The, the weirdest of the bunch here we're talking about today because I feel like if I'm James Gunn, regardless of what this movie does, I'm reboot. I'm hitting reboot. I will just rewrite the ending to say, thus the flash has been rebooted. Um, yeah. And with that line of thinking, what would you want them to do? Like clean slate. You're able to do whatever you want with the flash we went through like characters, stories, costume, etc. For the other ones, what's your rundown of the Flash? Whether it's Barry, Wally, Jay, Jesse, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, I, again, I, I want to play into the whole Flash family thing, but mm-hmm. um, you could start with Jay Garrick, but you don't want that because he's not content. He's only contemporary with the JSA, right? Um, but he does work in a Justice League Unlimited scenario because you know it's Jay Garrick. Um, in terms of the suit, uh, the one thing I did appreciate, I couldn't, I can't appreciate from the Justice League Flash is that that was his version of a scientific take on the, on it. Yeah. But it was a grounded scientific take. It wasn't a scientific take that was inspired by the way his powers work, which, which to me, I always found it interesting that, one of one of the one of, one of my favorite iterations of the 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 suit origin story of the Flash is the New Fifty Two, because what he finds out is that the speed force electricity that he generates causes certain materials to react a certain way. 
mm-hmm. which is how he gets to put the entire suit into the ring. So his powers are directly linked to the science that explains the suit going into the ring. Which is an easy and, way for the writer to say it's magic, right? Because right, Speed Force science comic- doesn't... Right. You right. don't have to be like, Which, oh, it's tactical. It's made out of a rocket ship, so it won't catch on fire. It's like, no, you can just say it's Speed Force science. And it's like, as an audience member who knows nothing about the, C- the Speed Force, you accept it. And you can get get that nonsense out of the way and just have right. fun with it. And the funny thing is that as he... So in the New 52, when he does the thing, it's not a whole suit like the 60s, 70s Flash. It's mm-hmm. pieces of it. And as he runs, they attach to him and become the total suit. Yeah. Which is super cool. And um, and the audience will accept that because we accept the, the Black Panther doing the, the this thing on the necklace and the suit just comes out. Yes. It's not yes. like that's too We goofy. accept Iron Man going into nanotech and just... Like, we right. accept that. So, so I kind of want that from Barry. Um, but also the idea of Speed Force Science... You establish that with Barry because then you can go into Speed Force spirituality with Wally, which the right. because he has a different type of connection with the Speed Force. That's the whole point of of the Speed Force because that's where you go into Max Mercury, you go into um, Johnny Quick, Jesse Quick, and all those people, which are all science related but spiritual speedsters and blah 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 blah. But um, yeah, I kind of I, I want all of that. I know I'm probably not going to get all that, um, but more importantly. After this Flash movie, if I get another Flash movie, I want it to be a Flash movie. I don't want it to be garbage bag collector Flash. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying that the DCEU is garbage, but what I'm saying is like, it's it's clearly it's only cre- be it used. Right. right. It's a movie created to do a job, not a movie that's made to showcase a character that I love, which is what a solo movie should be. I totally agree with all of that. Um, that's why, like, the entire idea of this film always rubbed me the wrong way. So it's seeing all of the turmoil and everything going on with this character in this movie, it's just, it makes it easy for me to say, I don't care. Once yeah. we get that, like, first official trailer, maybe I'll feel differently. Um, but as the way I would approach the Flash as a character, I would do everything you said, right? I, I do what well, we've been saying the entire episode of you make it distinctly Flash. I don't need yeah. to try and blur the lines, right? Up. This all has to make sense because it's interconnected. It doesn't. It really doesn't. The Guardians of the Galaxy tonally don't feel anything like Captain America. But when those two come together, we don't question it and we do not care. <laughs> so it's like, James, that's why, again, out of anybody, James Gunn would be the guy to understand that. So it's like, let the yeah. Flash have its own mythos, have its own Flash family. You can even, that's that's why I love DC, right? Because you have those legacy characters and they're built in. You can have 10 years of Barry Allen being the Flash. Yeah. And then when the actor wants to be done with it, you pass the torch to Wally, right? And you keep the, yeah. you keep the franchise going. One of the issues, quote unquote issues with Marvel is that Phase four struggled because they they lost the star power. They lost Iron Man. They lost Captain America. And they they have to win us over with characters like Moon Knight and Miss Marvel. And some people they did, some people they didn't. And so, like, Marvel's in that state of limbo of the biggest character is Spider-Man, and they don't even own him, right? With DC, you can build it out in a way to by the time we get to year 10 and all of your main actors start retiring, we're already fans of Tim Drake. We're already fans of Jason Todd. We're fans of Barbara Gordon. We're fans of Donna Troy, right? And that second wave can just carry it like nothing ever happened. So I think yeah. that's how I would approach it. And I love that we're on the same page of embrace your legacy characters. Embrace your legacy because you are DC Comics. As much as we love Marvel, I'm just going to say it. DC is more iconic because we never had the Trinity in a movie together. Ever, but everyone on the planet still knew who they were. We had to learn about Iron Man and Captain America and Captain Marvel. And those movies are great. I love them. But DC's cultural impact without movies is, in my opinion, a little bit greater, which is why people are so passionate about it. And they have that reverence for the mythology and the characters. 
So just embrace it. Go all in. Make Superman yeah. Superman. Embrace the bat, the crazy elements of Batman, right? Have Rachel Ghoul have a Lazarus pit. Have Bane have Venom. You don't have to strip that stuff away and just become the DC universe, right? Drop the EU, become the DC universe. And this is our take on it, right? Another world in the multiverse. Nicely said. With a neat little bow, too. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else, Brandon? No, man. I think I think I think we've covered it all. Um, this was supposed to be a thirty-minute video. <laughs> we yes, are fools. It's, uh, um, yes. <laughs> but it yeah, was it I mean, was a fun conversation. I think I think I think to finish and to agree with everything you said is just celebrate our just just celebrate. We want a universe that celebrates the characters that we love yeah. in their best in their best moments and their worst moments. That's all we want. Be true to the characters. Be true to the essence of the characters. Be true to the essence of the group that these characters are part of. And we will come and we will spend our money and keep coming back. That's all. And we, I think we can agree, James Gunn knows how to tap into that essence of characters and into the essence of character and and mixing the essences of these different characters together to bring something that's satisfactory so i can't wait to hear what he comes out comes up with and hopefully makes everybody very happy agreed guys if you enjoyed this episode of the cheddar after daily make sure you give us a like and subscribe let us know what your thoughts are on the dc universe past present and future in the comment section down below if you want to see more of these just sit down conversations talking mike we can totally do that just give us ideas let us know what you want to see us talk about um if you guys want to check out the main show the chatter after that's here on the youtube channel also in your podcast feed under the chatter after we're talking movies comics games everything the whole gauntlet every other week and also check out the amateur otaku podcast as well where we are talking anime every single week doing live streams it's a blast over there Brandon, this was a very fun conversation. Can't wait to see where the DC Universe goes from here. Where can they find you, Flash? You can find me at the Scarlet Fan 52 on Twitter. And you can find me at the Amateur Taco Pod. Guys, you can find me at Novice Cinephile everywhere. We'll be back with more from the chatter after. Till next time, keep watching movies, keep reading comics, and be nice to each other. We don't want to be a toxic fandom. Thank you. Have it awesome.